morning, Five Point Church. Hope you all are doing well on this Easter morning. Man, if this is your first time checking out Life Point Church, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us on Easter as we come together as a church family. Even though we can't meet in person, I know that's getting redundant, we keep saying it, but even though we can't meet in person, we can still meet and do life together. And today is, is so, so important for us to continue to do that, as this is Easter. This is the day that we come together as a family and celebrate the greatest event that has ever taken place in our world. We celebrate the resurrection of God's Son, the resurrection of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. And we celebrate because, because the tomb is empty, right? He defeated death, hell, and the grave for us. And that one fact changes everything. And if that doesn't get you pumped up, man, I don't know what will. So thank you again for being here with us and celebrating Easter uh, at LifePoint Live. So, um, and before we get going, as I say every week, go ahead and feel free to get in that comment section. Encourage each other. You know, talk about, discuss the message. Just say hey to one another. Just connect in that comment section, whether you're watching it live right now or you're watching it after the fact on our website or on YouTube. Get in that comment section and uh, get a watch party going. Invite your friends. Man, it's going to be awesome. So again, thank you all so much for being here with us this morning. So today we are continuing on, even though it's Easter Sunday, we're continuing on with our current conversation called When God's Not Fair. Now think about this. How many times in your life have you heard somebody say, that's not fair? Or how many times have you personally said it yourself? It's not fair. You see, we hear it and sometimes we say it all the time. When, when things don't go according to plan or when things don't go the way we feel that they should or that we want them to, we're quick to say, man, that's not fair. When, when, uh, when we're not able to meet together on Easter face to face, one might say it's not fair. Times like this, and just in life in general, it's not an uncommon phrase to say. And it's honestly not uncommon to hear someone say, not just that's not fair, but actually get frustrated at God and say, God, this isn't fair. God, why did you let this happen? You could have stopped it, but you didn't. God, why did you do this? God, this just isn't fair. Again, we're quick to jump on the bandwagon of that's not fair when it doesn't go well for us. But what about those times when whatever's unfair does? We talked about that last week, and, and if you were with us last week, you'll remember that we, we kind of identified and defined fair based on our human standards as following the exact standard of what is right and proper, no matter what. No deviation from what's right and proper, right? No, uh, no exceptions to the rule. Not just this one time or, yeah, we're giving you the benefit of the doubt because you were actually doing the noble thing, even though it went against whatever is right. None of that. Fair is sticking straight to what's right and proper regardless. So with that definition of fair, do we really want God? to be fair to us all the time, without deviation, without exception. Do we really want God to be fair? Because think about it, if God were always fair, if he was always right and always proper, and we always got what we deserved and never got what we didn't deserve, I promise you, you wouldn't be real happy about that. You wouldn't feel good about that. You wouldn't be like, ah, oh, this is, I really want this, or I wish I could have this, but it's just fair. We, we wouldn't think that way when it comes to the things that God gives us and blesses us with that we don't deserve. It's in those moments when something that's not fair benefits us that we 
we need to be thankful for. We don't need to just always bang on the times that something is unfair and it hurts us or hurts someone we love or we just don't like it. We've got to also remember that some things God has given us and blessed us with aren't fair either. And it works out incredibly to our benefit. You see, there's times when God gives us what we don't deserve. He doesn't give us what we do deserve. And it's not fair at all. And on this, this Easter Sunday, we celebrate this very thing. We celebrate the fact that God is not fair. Now, you may not like say it that way. You may not think of it that way, but that's actually what we're doing. We're celebrating something that is 100% not fair. Check this out. Ephesians, we read this last week, 2, uh, 4 through 5 tells us this. But God is so rich in mercy and loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, even though we deserved death, condemnation. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. You see, today we are celebrating the fact that God's love is not fair. And that's exactly what we're talking about throughout this series, that God's love is not fair. Easter, what we celebrate, the death and resurrection of, of, of Jesus, for us is not fair. Because fair would have been that Jesus, the perfect Son of God, would not have been crucified. Would not have went to the cross and died a criminal's death, a brutal death for us in our place. That's, that, that, that's not fair. If, if, he, if he did it, it's not fair, but fair would have been him not doing it. Fair would be us getting 100% what we deserve, which is death, condemnation, eternal separation from a holy God. That's what we deserve. That's what is fair. Yet God loved us so much, right? He's so rich in mercy, not giving us what we deserve. He's being unfair. He's rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And that should lead us to saying, God, that's not fair. But I thank you. <laughs> I thank you for it. And so today, as we, we continue on this series and over the next several weeks, we're going to be continuing the conversation by looking specifically at a few individuals in Scripture, and we're going to look at some life experiences that they had when they encountered God's unfair love. The fact that God was unfair. These individuals very clearly came face to face with that very thing, with God's unfair love. And with today being Easter, I want to start out by reading through and exploring the crucifixion account. Because within it is one of the greatest examples of God's unfair love. And it may not be exactly what you're thinking. Today we're going to be looking at God's unfair love to the thief that was crucified next to Jesus. So let's go ahead and jump into God's word. And we're going to start in Luke chapter 23, and we're going to start reading in verse 32. So it says this, two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him, with Jesus. When they came to the place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross, and the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Now jumping to verse 39, it says, one of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed at him, which he was, he was um, belittling him. He was making fun of him. He was blaspheming him. It says he's the one criminal beside him scoffed him and said, so you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. He was mocking Jesus. Verse 40, but the other criminal, the other thief protested, 
do you not fear God even when you've been sentenced to die? He said, we deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said this. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you today that you will be with me in paradise. So we've learned two very clear things about God and his love in this passage. We clearly see evidence of the fact that God's love is unfair. But we also see clear evidence that salvation, being made right with God, is by grace through faith in Jesus alone. It's Jesus plus nothing. It's through grace by faith in Jesus. You see, the thief was completely hopeless at this point. He was hopeless. He couldn't do anything to right his wrongs at that point. He couldn't go back and seek forgiveness from those he wronged or who he hurt during his, his criminal life. He couldn't do that. He couldn't um, go and perform any religious rituals or religious acts. He couldn't do anything from that point to earn his salvation, to earn being right with God, because he too was in the middle of dying. He was nailed to a cross. He was helpless. 100% hopeless. But then there's Jesus who was right beside him. Jesus with his unfair love. And when the thief simply kind of stopped the other guy from talking and said, man, we deserve this. I deserve, my life is a mess. Jesus, just remember me. Would you please just remember me when you come in your kingdom? But Jesus took it a step further than just remembering him. Jesus gave him a gift of something that he could not do himself, something he could not earn at that point whatsoever, or ever could he earn. Jesus gave him forgiveness. He gave him new life, which is weird thinking that he's hanging from the cross and he's been given new life, but it's exactly what happened. Through Jesus, that thief, through his faith, was made right before God in that very moment. From the cross, dying, Jesus said, I promise you, today you're going to be with me in paradise. It's such a beautiful thing to see Jesus extending his unfair love. Again, this is nothing but his love in action. His unfair love in action. And a perfect example of the truth this truth of the gospel message is found again in Ephesians chapter 2, this time in verses 8 and 9, which says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It's nothing that you could do. But it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. Our standing with God, our ability to receive his love has nothing to do with what we can do and what we've done and what we have done. It, all that matters is grace through faith because of Jesus. Because he died for you and God rose him from the grave. Because of that, we, just like that thief who were helpless and hopeless, can say, God, just remember me. I deserve the punishment. Just remember me. And he will say, today you'll be with me. It's a beautiful picture of the gospel message. Very simple and very beautiful. But this isn't the only thing that we see in this, from this passage. It's not just that the, the gospel message is presented clearly right there, that, that it's about grace through faith and not by works. The other thing that we see, and I want you to, I want you to hear this, and, and I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but I, I, I believe that there are people is that when it comes to God's unfair love, when it comes to turning to him and giving him your life, you're not too late. Again, you are not too late. It's never too late to turn to God or 
or to return to God, depending on where you're at and what your situation is. And we see this with a thief. You see, it, it appeared that he had missed his window of opportunity. I mean, he is moments away from dying. A, a miserable death. Like, the cards are kind of stacked against him. It seems like all this loss for him and that he is out of time. But he took advantage of what moments he had left. He realized that it wasn't too late for him because Jesus was there. And so he seized that moment and said, Jesus, remember his life, the remainder of his life and all eternity was forever changed for him specifically. And that's a picture of God's unfair love, but also the fact that it's never too late. I love how Joel in the Old Testament puts this in Joel chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. He's writing this to the people of Judah. He said, this is what the Lord says. Turn to me now while there's still time. Turn to me now while there's still time. In the message translation, which is like a paraphrased translation of the Bible, it says it this way. It says, but there's also this. It's not too late. It's not too late. Turn to God while there's still time. The Lord says, turn to me now while there's still time. Then he continues, give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Tear your, don't tear your clothes and your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Then he says this. He says, return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful. He is compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He says he is eager to relent and not that right there, my friends, is our good God. Merciful, compassionate, slow to get angry, filled with unfailing, and dare I say, unfair love. And he's eager to relent and not punish. And this is exactly what the thief experienced. Because you see, it's never too late. I don't know where you're at in your life right now, but I want you to hear me clearly. You are not too late. There's still time to turn back to God or to turn to God for the very first time. And for you, maybe maybe you've kind of just been pushing and avoiding God because you feel like I mean, you've messed up so much throughout your life or that you've spent your life kind of discrediting God or, or just ignoring God altogether. And you just feel like, you know, I've spent most of my life without him. You know, it's kind of just too late at this point. Like, well, what's the point? Right? What's the point? And then, and then so you just kind of ignore God because you feel it's too late. But understand that it's never too late. The thief lived his life and was dying on the cross, and it wasn't too late for him. So I'm telling you, it's not too late for you. Or maybe for you, you, you have a connected relationship with God through Jesus. You've given him your heart. But somewhere along the way, you've, you've kind of veered off course. You've, you've got distracted by life and, and all the things within it, all the, the great things, the frustrating things, or the hurt, the pain, the things that may have happened. And you've just kind of started drifting onto your own. And you've neglected your relationship with God. And maybe for you, you feel like at this point, it's too late to return to God because, I mean, you're, you're full of guilt and shame for it. And you feel like God's mad at you, so you're just like, I've, I've blown it. And there's no way I can come back from this. For you, it's not too late to return back to God. Because you see, he is eagerly awaiting you. Whether you've never connected with him the first time, or you have a relationship with him, you've never turned your back. He is waiting for you to come back to him. And he's not going to be mad at you. He's not going to He's not going to, you know, do the tisk tisk kind of thing. He's not going to be all over you because we just read in Joel that he says he's merciful. He's compassionate. Never, he's slow to get angry, and he's filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not to punish. Do you 
you're not too worried. And when you feel that way, remember the thief. Just remember the thief. Remember that it was not too late for him, so it's not too late for you. Because the thief could cry out from the cross in his final moments. And say, man, I deserve what I'm getting. But Jesus, you don't. You don't deserve what you're getting, so remember me. Just remember me when you come into your kingdom. If the thief can do that in his final moments, we can too. Jesus is waiting for you. Salvation can be yours. Peace and hope can be yours. Forgiveness and a connected relationship with God can be yours. Not because of anything that you do, but because of what Jesus did on the cross. And because of the fact that God was so rich in mercy and love that he sent his son to die for you, but then raised him from the grave, claiming victory for us all, defeating death, hell, and the grave. That's the reason to celebrate. And it's why we celebrate his unfair love today, because we didn't deserve it. None of us deserve it. We didn't earn it. We deserve death. But Jesus took our place gave his life for us so that we could live. And today, Easter Sunday, man, we celebrate that fact. We celebrate the fact that the tomb is empty and that Jesus is on the throne. We celebrate the fact that God's love is not fair. It's a beautiful thing. And I want to remind you that it's not too late. Let's pray. God, we come to you this morning just so humble and thankful for the fact that, that you give us what we 100% don't deserve. And you withhold from us the things that we do. God, because we are flawed, we are not perfect, and we need a Savior. And God, you made that way by sending Jesus. And I'm so thankful for that, God. We celebrate and we worship you. And so this morning, God, for everyone that's, that's here or that's hearing this, God, I pray that you would speak truth and light to them this morning, God, that they would hear you and you alone. God, that if they've never come into a relationship with you, that, that you would move in their hearts in such a way, God, that they would say, God, Jesus, just remember me. I know I've got flaws. I know I'm not perfect. And I need a Savior, God. Just remember me. So maybe for those that have that connected relationship with him and kind of turn their backs or walk in a different path, God, that they would know that it's not too late to return. God, you are so good. You are merciful. You are loving. You are relentless in your love, and we're so thankful. So God, continue to bless in our lives. God, I pray for protection over each person that's, that's listening to this and um, that's here with us, Lord, on this point, this online platform. God, I pray that you would bless them and their families. And God, again, we celebrate and worship you. Thank you for dying for us, and thank you for raising the dead, and defeating death, and claiming victory for us all. In your name we pray. Amen. So again, man, thank you all for being here with us for LifePoint Online. Thank you for hanging out with us on Easter. Uh, it's so incredible, even though this is the oddest Easter um, service that I've ever been a part of. I love it, and I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be here. Um, and again, if this is your first time at LifePoint, and you want more information about our church, um, you can drop that in the comment below and someone will get back in touch with you. If you want more information about what it looks like to have a connected relationship with Jesus, um, send me a direct message or an email. Um, you can go to our website, lpc503.com, and find my email address. Um, or you can leave it in the comments and I'll get back with you. Um, but either way, we love you guys. Um, and uh, we just appreciate you being here. Um, last thing is, as always, uh, if you call Life Point Church home, um, you can still continue to um, give and worship God through your tithes and your offerings. You can just go to our website again. It's lpc502.com. In the top right-hand corner is an online giving button. You click it. It takes you to a safe and secure place where you can give. It's super simple, uh, but we just want to encourage you to, uh, to give um, and give faithfully um, during this time so that we continue to do ministry, continue to reach out to other people, and continue to bless others. 
Um, in that same note, if you are struggling, if you've lost your job or your, your work has slowly backed down or your business is struggling, and let us know. We, we want to, to love on you in, the, in whatever way that we can, um, in the best way that we can. So feel free to reach out to us and we want to partner with you and, and kind of walk with you as, as we navigate this, these crazy times together. Finally, again, thank you for being here. Uh, make sure you check us out next week as we continue on with this series. We're going to be looking at the life of the prodigal son, that parable that Jesus told. And um, we're going to see that because of God's unfair love, it doesn't matter how far you've gone, you've never gone too far. You're, you cannot escape God's love. So be here next week as we discuss and work through that. I love you guys. Happy Easter. Enjoy your time with your family the rest of the day. We'll see you next time. Devil's up.